In the vast expanse of the world, where the land met the sea and the sky kissed the horizon, there lived a wealthy, greedy and vicious serpent king named King George. With a cunning mind and a ruthless army of serpents at his command, King George conquered countless animal kingdoms, plundering their wealth and resources to fuel his insatiable greed. From the depths of the oceans to the highest peaks, no kingdom was safe from King George's grasp. He raised his banner of conquest high, subjugating the creatures of the air, land and sea under his rule. His two sons, Prince Conway and Prince Vino, led his armies with ruthless efficiency, expanding his dominion across continents. But amidst his conquests, King George's gaze fell upon the nations of the children of men. These prosperous lands, ruled by the descendants of Ghana, Ogunda, and Utunri, stood as beacons of harmony and unity. The children of men coexisted in love and shared cultures, their wealth and resources sought after throughout the world. Enraged by their prosperity and fearing their potential to challenge his empire, King George devised a nefarious plot. He would launch a diplomatic war against the United Nations of the Children of Men, sowing seeds of discord and mistrust among them. With his daughter, Princess Octavia, as his pawn, King George sought to infiltrate the inner circles of the Children of Men's kingdoms. He offered her hand in marriage to Prince Hassau of Ghana, hoping to create divisions within the alliance and weaken their defences. As Princess Octavia arrived at the palace of King Hatu, tensions simmered beneath the surface. Prince Hassau welcomed her with open arms, but his first wife, Princess Ajoke, harboured jealousy and suspicion. Meanwhile, King Badega of Ogunda frowned upon the union, wary of King George's ulterior motives. Unbeknownst to King George, a clever tortoise named Umba had uncovered his plot. With knowledge gained from years of experience and wit, Umba saw an opportunity to turn the tide against the Serpent King. Umba journeyed to the Serpentine Kingdom, offering his services to King George in exchange for wealth and power. Recognising Umba's cunning, King George agreed to his terms, unaware of the tortoise's true intentions. The Serpent King, intrigued by Umba's proposition, leaned forward on his throne, his eyes gleaming with a mixture of curiosity and greed. What concessions do you seek, Umbi? he hissed, his voice dripping with a sinister undertone. Umba, maintaining his composure, responded with a sly grin playing on his lips. Your Majesty, he began, I seek three things in return for my assistance in unravelling this delicate web of deceit and betrayal. Name your demands, Umbe, King George urged, his forked tongue flicking out between his sharp teeth. Firstly, Umba declared, I require a substantial sum of wealth from your vast treasures, enough to ensure my comfort and security for the rest of my days. The Serpent King nodded thoughtfully. Agreed, he hissed. You shall have your wealth. Secondly, Umba continued, I demand a position of power and influence within your empire. I wish to be appointed as your chief advisor on matters concerning the conquered kingdoms and any future conquests. King George eyed Umbe with a mixture of suspicion and intrigue. You seek to be my right-hand advisor, he mused. Very well. If you prove your worth, the position shall be yours. Umba nodded in satisfaction. Lastly, he said, I request immunity for myself and my descendants. I wish to be granted protection from any retribution or punishment for my actions in aiding you. The Serpent King's eyes narrowed as he considered Umba's final demand. After a moment of silence, he spoke. You drive a hard bargain, Umbe, but I agree to your terms. Immunity shall be granted to you and your descendants, provided you fulfil your end of the bargain. Umba bowed low before the Serpent King, a triumphant smirk on his face. It is settled then, Your Majesty, he said. With your resources at my disposal and my cunning intellect, we shall bring the nations of the children of men to their knees. And so, with their pact sealed, Umbe and the Serpent King set their plans into motion. 
Umber used his influence and expertise to sow discord among the United Nations of the Children of Men, exploiting the tensions between the kingdoms and stoking the flames of distrust and suspicion. Meanwhile, Princess Octavia struggled with her conflicting loyalties, torn between her duty to her father and her growing affection for Prince Hassau. As tensions escalated and the threat of war loomed on the horizon, Umber played his part masterfully, manipulating events from the shadows to further the Serpent King's ambitions. In the end, the unity of the United Nations of the Children of Men was shattered and the kingdoms fell into chaos and turmoil. With their defences weakened and their alliances fractured, they stood vulnerable before the might of the Serpent King's army. But little did the Serpent King know, Umber had his own agenda, and his loyalty to the Serpent King was only temporary. As the kingdoms teetered on the brink of destruction, Umber seized his opportunity to betray his former ally, turning the tide of the war in favour of the children of men. With Umber's guidance, King George's plot was set into motion, but as tensions escalated and alliances faltered, Umber revealed his betrayal. Turning the Serpent King's own armies against him, Umber joined forces with the nations of the Children of Men to resist King George's tyranny. In a climactic battle, the armies of the Children of Men faced off against King George's forces. With unity and determination, they emerged victorious, driving the Serpent King and his sons back to their kingdom in defeat. Peace once again reigned over the lands, and the nations of the Children of Men stood stronger than ever. Umba, hailed as a hero for his bravery and cunning, returned to his kingdom, his back still cracked, but his spirit unbroken. And as the sun set on the horizon, casting golden hues across the sky, the Children of Men celebrated their victory, knowing that together they could overcome any foe, no matter how wealthy, greedy, or vicious. <laughs>